Hello, this is Sybil Harmony. And this is a video about the current energy, the full moon or the lunar eclipse that's coming up about healing our emotions and owning our authority. And when I tuned into this energy and asked my guides, what do you want me to make a video about? They showed me tiger. So I get messages from animal totems, um, from uh, out in nature. Also, I use cards or what the animals that I see in my mind's eye. And so I have two stories about tiger that are coming up for um, that I'd like to share. Storytelling used to be an ancient way of sharing knowledge and passing down wisdom. And so I love storytelling. And so this energy that we're in right now, there's a lot of anger. <laughs> and um, I was taught, uh, in, that's kind of a topic that people like maybe are uncomfortable with. Um, and so what happens when we've been wounded and we push down our anger, it will, it'll come back because you can't, you can't um, get rid of it, it, it by stuffing it down or pretending to be nice. So I grew up in a time where I watched Shirley Temple, Doris Day, you know, the Partridge family. And I was taught that, um, well, I used to be blonde when I was younger. So I thought, okay, I'll be a dumb blonde. My mother modeled that for me to be, um, to kind of be a doormat or to be, you know, let the man feel like they're the power. And um, that didn't work very well, pretending to be somebody I wasn't trying to be a role model or being nice. And so we're taught as women that we need to be, or even as people that we need to be a good person and we need to be nice. And so what happened for me is when I finally started finding my inner authority and my, my voice and a lot of what my lessons in this lifetime have been about finding my inner authority, finding my authentic self, being who I am, because I grew up in a family like many of us or in, in a society where I was taught that I wasn't good enough and that I should be like other people or someone else or be a good person or be better than. And I'm not against the esoteric meanings of religion for, in its purest form, but I am not a religious person. <laughs> I'm not against the uh, original messages that came from archangels or ascended masters or Buddha or Kuan Yin or um, whoever you were, you know, whatever religion you're following, Islamic or Hindu or whatever. I'm not against any of those, but I, I felt from the witch trials in um, Europe, um, we were taught not to have our gifts and our power. To be to repress that and a lot of my um and not and we're also taught now by the mainstream media not to be woke not to be um uh, not to speak out not to oh we're being rude or so we don't want to be rude we don't want to be angry because our anger doesn't in some ways it it's there's nothing wrong with it 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 cannot serve us. It can create health issues. It can create stress. It can definitely push people away and cause a lot of problems for you. If you're out of control and even breaking laws because you're being violent, you're that's really not a good place to be in. But if we're too nice and we stuff everything down, it'll implode on us and we are disempowered. So how do you own yourself and your emotions and be in your power and um, not be a doormat or a victim? And so uh, most of my life, I was a doormat and a victim because I thought if I empowered other people or made them feel good, and I was coming from an abusive home, I was really good about figuring out what other people wanted to hear or what would make them happy or what they needed. And I thought if they could be happy or okay, then they wouldn't abuse me, which is not true either. <laughs> so I've realized that the, that you can't please anyone and that I really needed to be to thy own self be true, to be true to myself. And that the best path was for me was kind of a middle road of being assertive, 
of owning my power, but doing it in a way where I could be in wisdom and in grace rather than lashing out or being a victim and then stuffing it down and then exploding. I remember when I was in my thirties, I started learning to have my voice or like I was, I was dating this guy and he said, I never know what you want. You never, you just want to like, what does he would say? You want to go here? And I'd be like, okay, do you want to, what do you want to do? I don't know. How do you feel? I don't know. What do you want? I don't know. Whatever you want. You know, it's just like, I was just, Oh my God, people pleaser. And I remember, um, you know, and God help uh, a man who has a woman who doesn't know what she wants because then he can't make her happy. He can't give her what she wants. So it kind of like makes him go haywire. It kind of like turns the energy. It's like weird. Okay. So um, unless he's really super codependent too or doesn't care or something, it's weird. But so... Um, and then I would go on the other hand and I would demand things. Once I was in a marriage, I would demand everything to be my way. And I had all these rules that you had to follow or I was going to be unhappy. And you were going to hear about my feelings. And I mean, it was just so I was all over the place. And I remember standing in a line at a bakery and everyone kept going in front of me. And I was just standing there and, I, you know, my my old self would be just be nice and wait. It doesn't matter. You can there. They need, you know, and I, something happened inside of me and my whole face turned red and I blurted out, I was here first. And I yelled and everyone was like, oh my God. And my, I was shaking and my face was red. It was like way inappropriate to the situation that I was in. It was just, you know, I could have just said, excuse me, it's my turn or I was in line, you know, but I, I, the energy was piled up for years and it just, bleh. so that's what happens when we stuff our energy. So I started learning to be who I was, finding out who I was and being assertive. I actually have a class that's coming up on, um, I think it's April 6th, two days before the eclipse on healing our karma, healing our fear and we're going to be healing patterns and emotions. So this had been a pattern that I've had with, I I was um, in the Inquisitions. Many of us who are gifted were there. We were silenced or we watched others or in past lives, or we have been taught by society that we need to be nice and not make waves or be a good girl. We've been taught in our family. And then at school, you would get in trouble if you spoke out, you know, so we're taught not to have our voice and not to be who we are, that we need to fit in. And all that can make us really depressed, really fearful and really angry. And so that was me. And so I went on this journey uh, to find who I was and to be assertive and to own my power. And I'm okay with me now. And I can handle situations, I can stand my ground, kind of like a blade of grass where you, a blade of grass, you can cut it and it grows back or a willow tree, it will blow in the wind, but it stays grounded. Okay. So what we want to do is stay grounded, stay within who we are, but also know how to be flexible. I'm also doing a video with Susan Lynn on uh, Monday, the 18th at about, I think it's uh, 730 central time about healing the heart chakra how we stay in our courage and how we stay with our heart open and loving in the face of, you know, the things that we're going through now, the roller coaster rides, the adversity, the, um, I mean, so how do we do that and stay in our center and come from a place of, uh, of love, but not a doormat? And so um, the, there's um, another story I want to tell you called The Tiger's Eyelash. And this story is about, other than the story at me at the bakery, okay, so this story is about a woman who was married to a man who was in the war. He was in a war. And um, this is a metaphorical, symbolic teaching, the story called The Tiger's Eyelash. And so when her husband came home from war, he was very angry. 
And so he would just, he wouldn't come in the house. He would just sit under a tree in the front yard and kind of growl at her and, uh, you know, when she would try to talk to him and she thought, wow, this is really bad. So she went to the town healer and she said, what can I do to heal my husband? Can you make me a potion or a tonic that will make him loving once more? He's very angry and he won't talk to me. He won't come in the house. Um, so the healer said, yes, there, there is, there is something we can do, but I'll need an ingredient to make, uh, to make this work. And she said, what's that? And he said, well, I'm going to need a tiger's eyelash. And she was like, what, where am I going to get a tiger's eyelash? I don't have a tiger's eyelash and tiger being the part of us that is really intuitive that seeks the truth that is on the spiritual path and also dealing with our anger you know how do we deal with our our anger and other people's anger so she goes she goes okay i'll get it i'll, I'll figure it out i'll do it so there's the resiliency we need to be resilient we need to be willing to heal ourselves and so she goes home she packs up some food for herself and in a basket and she starts heading up the mountain to find a tiger to get an eyelash and so she starts walking up the mountain and um it's cold and she's tired but she keeps going because she has perseverance she's determined to heal her husband which is also healing herself because this is a metaphor story remember we all have a male female side okay so she starts heading up the mountain and she walks past these big giant rocks that look like loaves of bread. And it just looks strange and she feels a little afraid, but she keeps going. So we keep going, even though we feel afraid because the only way out is through. So she keeps going and she starts going uphill and she goes through this forest with these trees with thorns and these birds that fly out and screech at her. And so she feels it's starting to get dark and she's scared. And she scratches herself, but I'm not going to let that stop me because I'm determined. So she keeps going. Then it starts to get steeper and it starts to rain and the rain is pouring down, hitting her in the face and she's getting wet, but she keeps going because remember where you are. You're in earth school. This is the Harvard of, of uh, schools, the planets that you came to. <laughs> it's not an easy course. <laughs> in case you haven't noticed. So she keeps going through the rain and then it starts to snow and she's cold and her feet are cold and she's determined and she keeps going and she gets to the top and she finds a little cave and she goes in and she passes out in exhaustion. And the next morning she wakes up and she looks out and oh my God, there's a tiger. <gasps> there's the tiger. Oh my God. So she devises, she thinks up this plan because every morning she sees the tiger out there. So she thinks if I put a little bit of food out and each day I'll move a little bit closer to the tiger till I'm close enough to ask him for an eyelash until he gets, you know, comfortable with me. So this is the, the part of us that doesn't give up. We can't, we don't give up and we put out love and compassion towards ourselves and others. And so she keeps putting out food and giving a little bit more, a little bit closer, a little bit closer. So she's giving him time. She's giving herself time to adjust to. And when finally one day she gets close enough and she says, I'm please, Mr. Tiger, if please, who are you? What do you want? says the anger. Um, and she's not, she can't be afraid. So we have to go walk through our fear. But she says, I've come all this way and I, I've given you this food and I, 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 just, I wanted to ask you for something. I'm sorry. I just wanted to ask you for something. And he goes, what do you want? He said, well, I know it's strange. I know it's unusual, but I was wondering if, please, if you could just, could you, could I have wanted your eyelashes? What? What? 
my eyelash, the audacity, you know. And so he goes, well, and this is the part of us that gives, gives a try, gives a little bit. He goes, well, you've given me this food, although it was very strange, I suppose. I suppose you could have one, one eyelash. Oh, thank you, thank you. So appreciation and gratitude, thank you, thank you. And fearlessly she reaches over and she plucks, bing, the eyelash. Oh my God, thank you so much. She has it, she puts it in a little pouch and she starts running down the mountain. She's running, she's going through the snow, through the rain, sliding in the mud, through the scary trees with the birds, past the big rocks, loaf bread rocks, and down to the healer's home. And she burst in the door and she goes, I have it, I have it, I did it, I got it, I have the tiger's eyelash, I got it, I got it. Now something can be done, thank God, something can be done. And she hands it to him. And he takes it and he holds it up in the light of the fireplace and he looks at it and he goes, hmm. and he goes, Poof, and he throws it in the fireplace. And she goes, oh my God, what did you do? Oh my God, I can't believe you did that. Why did you do that? And he goes, don't worry, don't worry. It'll be okay. Go home and do with yourself and your husband what you did with the tiger. Oh, okay. So this is a lesson about dealing with our anger, dealing with our emotions. And so this is clearly the, the energy of emotions. And so um, what we're going to do is a little clearing. And we're going to do this in my class more. A little clearing to clear away our are some of our emotional debris and just kind of clear off and get grounded so that we are in a better space to deal with the issues in our life. Okay. So let's do that now. And um, we're going to just um, close our eyes and breathe and just kind of give yourself a hug or say hello to yourself. And let's visualize a bubble of whatever emotion that you want to release. Or maybe it's a person or a relationship or an interaction you had Someone said something that hurt your feelings or made you angry or it's a person. And so what we're going to do is give you distance and give you neutrality. So if you put your finger on your forehead and kind of come up to the center of your head and breathe. And just kind of say hello to your body and your energy. Okay, there you are. And so there's a little bubble outside your aura. Your aura is about two to four feet around you. So there's a little bubble. And let's send that energy of that person, that event, into that little bubble or that feeling. Maybe you want to let go of a lot, some fear or some issue you've been working on. Good. And now let's put that little, let it come out of your body. Yeah. Into that ball. Okay. Breathe it out just for now. We're just going to let go of it for now. And now let's use another tool. Let's create a rose as a healing tool and put that little bubble in the rose and ground the rose.
Now, if you notice, and there are there might be rings on the stem of that rose. So rings signify past lives. And so to take the charge off issues, let's just, let's create a golden karma ring and drop it in that rose and it's going to absorb the past life karma and the issue. So drop it in there and then just drop gold uh, healing light into that rose. And let's ask um, the archangels uh, and your guides, the ascended masters, your animal totems to heal you from the karma of this issue, the pattern of this issue in all time and directions. Breathe it out and let it go in there. Good. And now give that, let's give that rose to your guides, to the angels and let it go. Good. If you want, you can blow it up. It's a way of just creating and destroying energy or just give it to your guides. You might take a breath or you might just start to feel more calm when you let go and then call back your energy, your power, is a vibration of light coming down through the top of your head. Call back your energy, your vitality, your power, your innate knowing of what to do, your inner authority, and your peaceful emotions. Not so that you're not dealing with issues, but so that you're not in reaction. You're not in fight or flight. You're responding. There it is. Beautiful. So that's just a tiny sample of what I do. And we'll call that a healing. Yay. And that's a tiny sample of some of the classes that I do or what I do in my sessions where we could look at it more detailed. Okay, what was the pattern? What was the past life? And um, a lot of times people get very emotional when they're looking at those kind of some intense issues. But that's how we heal. OK, um, I also have another story about spirituality and owning our power with a tiger. And um, this was a dream I had. I was um, getting a divorce and I um, in, in my life and I had a dream. And I the dream was that I was sitting in a building, an old building that was falling apart. Me and my life was falling apart. The self the marriage. And there were two guides in there and they were talking, this man and this woman. I knew they were my guides, but I, I was just standing there waiting, you know, I don't know. I was just standing there and all of a sudden they, she left. And then the male guide started walking down the stairs and leaving the building. I was like, wait a minute. I'm all alone. I don't, I don't know what to do. Help me. I, I'm all alone. Please. What are, where are you going? And I started following him. I'm like, come back. What do I do? I'm here alone. Like I wasn't in the marriage. I, I, you know, I just felt like I was alone in life and I didn't know what to do. And this was like 20 years ago. It was a long time ago. And I was already on the spiritual path. Maybe it was like 15 years ago, but I was already on the spiritual path. But I hadn't fully, you know, developed where I am now. So we're always developing, but uh, so he turned into a tiger and I was like, what? And, and the tiger had these moccasins on like walking, like that I have like walk your path. So shoes are, are how, and feet and ankles are the path we're walking, walking on. And then he, the tiger was wearing this white silk robe. So that was like the silk. I like silk clothing. And so, this was like my moccasins. He had my moccasins in a silk ro like like me, like be like me. And he started walking up a hill into the light. And I was like, "Wait, come back! What do I do? What do I do?" And I, t it got telepath to me, walk your path into the light, go into the light. I was like, "Oh, thank you. Okay, 
Yeah. So that's my other story about Tiger and empowering ourselves, which isn't really about emotion so much, but Tiger is also about our spiritual path. Okay. So thank you uh, for watching my video. Uh, please like and subscribe and check out my classes and um, look forward to seeing you next time. I really appreciate your comments and um, I'm, I'm very grateful that you spend time and um, sharing and liking. So take care. Bye-bye.